I'm an evangelical minister. Praise be thou, Lord God. King that goes to the core of my identity. My constituency would be conservative, very conservative. Thank you, NRA! Thank you! In my community, we talk about the sanctity of life, the value of every human life. Is that a, a pro-life ethic? It absolutely yes. is, Rob, because the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. There's a broken political dynamic in the center of our gun conversation, or violence conversation even, um, and both sides are really, you know, locked. The antlers or horns are locked. And uh, everybody's impulse when they're angry and, and feeling the enormity of their emotions on the subject is to just push harder. Um, and that's just driving us all deeper into conflict. So first of all, I wanted to see if there was a way to talk about it that would um, loosen that dynamic. Um, and I knew it would be not in the facts or the logic or the policy, because that's where people really get um, locked. I wanted to kind of see if there was a way to transcend the conversation and talk from a values point of view. The Bible's very plain about a man who don't protect his wife and kids is worse than an infidel. So what we need is Jesus and the gospel and a sidearm. I'm taking a big risk. If ever I were given the scarlet letter L, I could lose my career. The fact that Abby made it safe for me to speak my language, which is a religious language, and to look at things in a religious way, in terms of at least the morality and the ethics of it, made it very appealing even though at first very scary. <laughs> but it took me a little while to say yes to her. Abby created very, very safe space for me and for others in my community to talk about this. And I think it was very, very productive. And I hope it's even more so. It forced me to look hard at it. And, and because uh, Abby did a good job keeping me focused on it, uh, I, I, you know, I, I had to take it apart piece by piece, explore it with others, ask some very hard questions, take some very big risks. And in that process, came to my own conclusions. Conversation itself is what I hope people take away. I mean, I hope people start opening doors with people they haven't talked to before, discovering common ground, choosing to inhabit common ground, because that's an important next step to knowing that it's there, um, and they begin a dialogue. I just, I don't think we should be rushing into making particular choices about this law or that piece of information or a regulation. I think that we should have, you know, a national conversation among the people who aren't already shouting about it. There's, there's two things about AFI that I love. One is the critical mass of documentaries and filmmakers is so exciting to me because these are all people who've had the same kind of trouble making decisions and finding resources and all the rest of that. And that's such a rich community, documentary filmmakers. They are the most interesting people. They choose to eat ramen noodles every night and sleep under umbrellas and uh, leaky roofs. And <laughs> they choose this. Um, they are skilled and amazing people. So I just love being around them and I love watching their films. So that's one reason I love AFI. But then, you know, just this week we had a meeting at the White House yesterday. Um, where we were able to meet with people who are working on a lot of the same issues we're all thinking about. And we were able to kind of think about, you know, what, what can we do to help you? What can you do to help us? How do we, you know, build a constituency around your issues? So it's powerful. This is where the rubber meets the road. So then let us cast off the works of darkness, fear, ignorance, hatred, vengeance, and put on the armor of life. Let's pray. <laughs>